Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2017. We're going to take a look at commodities today. Uh, I did touch on gold and GDX yesterday. I'll follow up. I'll start out with with that today and we'll just hit them all um or most of them I'll, I'll cover oil natural gas uh some of the ag commodities as well and uh let's just run through this real quick this is the uh chart this is a chart i should say uh one hour 60 minute candlesticks a 60 minute chart of gc gold futures uh i did cover this in the video yesterday along with these price targets one two three right here um i have modified this wedge slightly the one that i showed you yesterday in the video that was uh, not reflective of uh outside um uh, regular trading hours so this shows all the trades on these futures um as as gold's trading nearly around the clock and we have uh 12 51 call it rounding off here 1258 and 1264 1265 ish those are my targets so a nice little pop so far this morning in gold so when you look at this revised uh, bullish uh, bullish falling wedge you see a breakout an initial move down almost a back test and then a move up i like the divergences in place and again you know i went into that covered gold pretty much in detail yesterday, so I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't trade futures, you prefer the ETFs, here's GLD. You can see this bullish falling wedge. I'm doing this video before the market opens, so this is not reflective of any moves today. Um, showing gold currently is indicated to gap up slightly. Uh, it had a pop er earlier this morning, uh, faded a little bit of those gains, so it's indicated to open about flat to slightly positive right now. I really haven't had time to clean this chart up, but if you're looking for price targets, well, let's just say right here, uh, actually there's some some mild resistance here and that levels that, uh, here, I'll just turn to this so it'll make it easier. Uh, brighten that color up and then you can see my levels here. So about 118.60, there's some resistance there. There's a gap. Um, that gaps, most gaps are likely to be backfilled. So again, you know, better to use that uh, chart of the gold futures because that's reflective of gold. You know, gold trades, this isn't like, you know, trading AT&T, a you know, U.S.-based company, although it trades around the world. Most of the trading goes on in the U.S. because it's a U.S.-based company. Unlike gold trades around the world, uh, given when you use GLD, this is in uh, U.S. dollars, but again, uh, that's why it's nice to use a futures chart because uh, while we're sleeping over here in the States, you know, they're trading gold elsewhere and uh, on the other side of the earth. So that's uh, why I like to use futures, especially when charting uh, certain uh, commodities like this and precious metals. All right, let's move on to GDX. Give you guys some targets there. I know uh, a lot of you prefer the, and I, and I normally do GDX. You know, I bought some gold futures yesterday. May also, oh, and actually I bought some GDX as well. I should stay and maybe increase that today. Looking for a break above this bullish uh, falling wedge and GDX, nice and clean. This is also a 30 minute chart like that GLD chart we were just looking at and there's your target so i have a target about 2180 and 2220 we'll call it somewhere right around there uh are my expected you know near-term bounce targets and as i said in yesterday's video the potential that this could turn into something more is certainly there one thing that i didn't cover in yesterday's video and i normally do when covering gold is the uh, chart of the euro U.S. dollar. Again, it's most important where the dollar goes, um, being the gold is priced in U.S. dollars. Uh, you can price in any currency you want, but what we're looking at um, in the futures and in GLD, of course, those are that's priced in U.S. dollars. So here's the uh, euro against the dollar. Um, one of the best indications of where the dollar is going to go since the euro has such a weighting. And you can see this is the same chart. I've, I've shared this for, for quite a while that we had this uh, divergent high here i was calling for correction the euro it hit my tar my two targets t1 had a bounce and then my final target zone reversed now these levels are still valid that t1 level that i had going back for months now that's about 117 um you can see the reactions the reactions there when we hit it then we broke below with an impulsive move that helped to validate that as an important support level because once we broke it there was a big impulsive move down below we came and back tested it and see this is just you know beautiful technical analysis how the euros danced around this level uh failed on the back test moved back down 
finally broke above it. And again, see the big green? It didn't just limp above it. Once it took out resistance, former support becomes resistance. Once taken out, a big impulsive move on the breakout. So uh, traders like that. It got back above 117, came in, back tested it again, and then boom. Now, what are we doing? We're falling back to that level. So there's slightly above it. We haven't hit it to the penny yet. But then again, we came slightly above it here. You know, you don't have to hit these levels to the penny every time. Point being is that the euro uh, dollar pair is just above support. And what that means is if we bounce, and, and I, I expect that, that would um, <clears throat> that would be bullish or at least give some tailwinds for the trade in gold, a long trade in gold. A euro up means dollar down. So if we do hold that 117 level and bounce right now, you can see this trend indicator. The PPO is still bullish. It crossed above the zero line. I look at the uh, 9 EMA back here indicating the trend was bullish, uh, went bearish here, and there was it caught most of that bear trend. So, uh, But you can see back here it was bullish this whole time from this point to this point and that captured that trend so it's done a pretty good job and again that's just one of many things factoring in i put probably a bigger emphasis on support here but i did want to make mention that uh, this helps align with the uh, my near-term bullish outlook on gold okay moving on let's look at natural gas this is a 60 minute chart two hour candles uh, looks a little busy, but just focus here on the uh, divergence. Nice. Uh, I have both the, on this one, the PPOA and the MACD up. Uh, that also, you can look at the two. You, you guys have probably noticed a lot of times I'll have PPO. Sometimes I'll have the MACD up. They're almost identical. Um, I'll, typically 60 minute and longer time frames, I'll use the PPO in lieu of the MACD. But uh, either way, they're in this case. Uh, they virtually mirror each other and they're, they're very similar in, in nature anyways. Uh, but this is what I'm looking at, a little divergent low down here. That's not a support line right there that I have. That's just the uh, bottom of the Fibonacci retracement. So what I was looking for here to try to identify some price targets, I did put a price level that I, I certainly think is a, a, a valid first target. That's the two... Uh, 0.845, so about uh, $2.84. You can see all the reactions right here. Uh, that makes for a nice uh, target. Uh, anybody going long natural gas. I don't see a great um, buy trigger. There's not a downtrend line or at least not one close by. I could draw one from here, but it would come in a little later. And I do have to say that, um, you know, I'm not in this trade right now. Uh, this could be a bear flag. This was an impulsive move down right here. And we've been consolidating. That's flagging type action. So if it breaks down, we're going to burn through these divergences. So uh, I just want to put this as a potential setup for those of you looking or interested in natural gas. Uh, I'm standing aside this one for now. But if we do hold and reverse here, um, you can see a couple of fib clusters on the chart above as well. You have uh, what I did is I took fibs from this point here, this reaction high, this reaction high uh, down to this low. And I put up so two sets of fibs and you look for these Fibonacci clusters. And these are, by the way, if you're new to investing or charting technical analysis, these are called Fibonacci retracement levels. And um, so, you know, if you get up here to 100 percent from this point, you've retraced 100 percent of this drop down. And if you get up to this line, you can see that's the 100 percent retracement for this point uh, and so you look for these key fib levels and right here we have a cluster coming in around one of those uh, retracements the 50 percent and then the 61.8 and there's another fib cluster here so these are potent potential um, targets as well so I would just tell you right now these are some of my targets for nat gas but again a little early on that one I'm just watching it for now all right, on a somewhat related note, we'll look at crude. These are uh, four-hour candles, six-month charts. Uh, this is CL crude futures, and uh, this is a pattern. I've showed this recently on the 60-minute chart. You had a breakdown. There was this uptrend line, uh, which formed this wedge-type pattern. You had a divergent high. You can see the negative divergence down here below. And uh, so essentially what you've had so far is a breakdown and back test. And as I made mention, I'm looking, I think crude um, is it's setting up for a pullback. At least uh, I see the upside is being limited right now. I think the risk reward uh, isn't very favorable to be long crude right now. Uh, we'll look at some other charts in a second here. But uh, uh, basically crude is approaching the top end of a, a, a pretty significant resistance zone, especially when you go out to the daily charts and all that. So uh, right now, this is what it is, and that's a breakdown below a trend, a trend line, a 
back test of that trend line and a rejection so far. Uh, so if this continues to play out, watch it to see if these previous lows get taken out. And that will probably mean a correction's underway. But again, it's, it's indicated here in the charts. Uh, at least that top was with the divergence. And so far we haven't uh, exceeded that high yet. Just when I zoom out, you can see to a, a daily time frame here that covers goes back uh, a year. You can see what I'm talking about the the reactions here. This is where crude had topped out earlier uh, about a year ago, and that's where we're at now. So um, and again, you can go back even farther, and you'll see that this is a pretty pretty significant area. It's not a hard, solid, well-defined level, but it's around these levels. And crude has had a heck of a run to get here. So there's those divergences. I have to redraw them here, and there's that same wedge we just looked at on the four-hour time period. So again. Um, I'm um, longer term bullish on the energy stocks, but uh, like to see a little pullback first, maybe recycle into those uh, some of those setups that I covered the other day at lower levels. This is USO, one of a couple crude ETNs out there and um, one of the more popularly traded ones. And you can see here, here's that same wedge type pattern. Uh, breakdown and back test. So, you know, it's done a pretty good job of tracking crude prices. And again, you can see here uh, just uh, this area of, of resistance here, uh, you know, these previous reaction highs here, here. So, like I said, it's more of a uh, resistance zone. And we've had a pretty big move to get up to that zone. So even if there's a little more upside in crude, I think it's limited. And at best, I maybe see some sideways action. Otherwise, uh, if you're looking for pullback targets, I do think we can come back down to this 1067 level. And that might be a good place if the uh, charts confirm at the time, especially the intraday charts. Um, might confirm a long into crude, and if we can go call to get the crude on, uh, get the call on crude right, um, you can usually get a lot more bang for your buck trading the energy stocks. OIL is another um, crude tracking ETN, and again, same story. Obviously, it's not charts aren't going to look so much different. This one's very similar to a uh, USO, and there's that uh, the uh, resistance. You can even see some here to the left. This chart goes back two years, by the way. It's a daily chart. Okay, now let's just run through some of the other commodities. I'll just go over. I have a watch list here of commodity ETNs. Well, I know a lot of you guys like to trade the ETNs versus the uh, futures. So uh, here it is. This is copper and uh, JJC. Um, Oh, sorry, I had to pause the video there for a brief second. Uh, I'm not sure where it was, uh, but the the charts are pretty clear. You have a, a fairly well-defined uptrend line and then a break uh, down below that uh, trend line. There's also a gap right there to maybe backfill. Uh, but near term, especially considering the scope of these divergence, you know, we had a divergent high here. Uh, we had, I don't know why the line left. There it is. We had a divergent high there. So, you know, simple but fairly effective. Sniff out these divergent highs on the daily time frame, and these are good for your swing trades. Uh, same with the divergent low. We had a divergent low there, and that was good for, for that rally. Uh, divergent high, good for that correction. Uh, another divergent high. I see no reason why this one won't play out for move back down to probably at least that uh, 3188-ish level. Uh, that would be my target. So again, um, whether we back test that gap or not, uh, that's where I'm thinking crude is, or I'm sorry, copper is likely headed. This is coal, uh, coal mine ETF, and I, if I'm not mistaken, this one doesn't hold. Uh, doesn't invest into coal, it invests in coal mining companies, uh, coal mining stocks. In fact, here's some of the names in there right now. Uh, you can see those individual stocks. I don't have much of an opinion. There's a divergent high, but it's not very steep divergence. This has just been a dead money trade moving sideways for a while. Uh, let's look at cow, let's livestock, ETF, ETN, I should say. Negative divergence here, you can see that led to a correction. Uh, I don't have a very strong opinion on where it's going right now, but these are all levels. So this one's at support. It's pretty pretty oversold right now. Last time it was oversold was right here. You can see down on the RSI below, and it led to that pop. Right now, where once again, this is the first time in over a year that we're, or the, I should say the second time in over a year, we've hit the oversold level at RSI. We're oversold at support, so maybe a bounce here in uh in this ETF, COW, cow. And if not, you can see this is a very, <clears throat> very solid support level down here below. So 
if we don't get a bounce here and you're looking to go long this one, um, definitely check the charts or give bump me, nudge me in the trading room for my opinion. I'll let you know what I think if it gets down there. That would uh, also be a, an objective long area if the charts confirm at the time. BAL, this is a cotton ETN. Uh, not a whole lot I see in this chart. This thing's just been grinding around sideways now for over a year. Um, I don't see a lot, not even worth mentioning here. WOOD, this is one of two timber ETNs, or ETFs, I should say, in my uh, watch list. Um, and really just not a lot to report. It has just been working its way up within this price channel. Uh, all you can really do at a price channel, if you want, is... Uh, uh, you know, buy at the bottom of the channel. You can try to sell at the top of the channel, but in an uptrend, prices can and often ride that top of the channel for a while. Uh, during a downtrend, if you have a bearish channel, you might see prices ride the bottom of the channel a little longer, but this is an uptrend. So as you can see here, uh, prices don't stay very long once they hit the bottom of the channel but like all channels this one's getting long in the tooth um, prices are going to eventually break down sooner or later this is nearly a two-year uptrend uh, in uh, lumber prices all right next one up is corn c-o-r-n uh, we have potential divergence in place, but it's only potential because the PPO is head pointed lower right now. Uh, so what could happen, look for a reversal. Certainly if prices reverse soon, those divergences would be confirmed, but uh, we could go lower. Uh, there's, there's plenty of room for corn uh, to drop lower if we went down here. If you look down below, you'd see we'd still have bullish divergence in place. And these divergences are usually good, again, for even though corn has been in a bear market, as most commodities have, especially your agricultural commodities, um, we've had quite a few swing trades. And you just sniff out these divergent lows, and uh, you can see that they're they're good for swing trades that are you know quite profitable, whether you're trading the ETF or, or futures. Uh, you look for these divergent lows. This must have been an official trade, I guess. T1 was hit. And uh, yeah, that's that. So let's keep an eye on that one. Looks to be uh, setting up for the next swing trade opportunity soon. Uh, target to probably take us back up to this 1850 level if and when this, this one finally reverses. All right, a couple more and we'll wrap it up. Soybeans, um, not a great looking chart. I'm not crazy about it. There is a trend line here, not a super well defined but a trend line worth noting and prices are right about at that trend line now there's also some support just below that um so this one's really just grinding around sideways for the last couple of years i don't see much really to talk on that anymore there's not a lot of opportunities i see there right now cut uh is another timber etf same story nearly a two-year trend line um watch that trend line watch when it breaks there's also some mild support around just below around 30 43 and you do have some divergences here at the most recent high so this one uh certainly getting long in the tooth and um sooner or later uh, timber will make for a decent short trade swing short uh we're not there yet but uh could be could be all right uh next up Sugar, uh, same story. You know, we've swung, swing traded. I'm about to say swung traded. Uh, swing traded this one, you know, the, in, in the same same story. Look for these divergent lows, which are bullish. And, you know, they, they set up these, uh, you know, rallies. And the divergent highs are bearish. So, again, simple yet effective. Just swing trade off these divergent highs and lows. And uh, we had a divergent low back here. Looks like I must have had this one as a, a trade idea. And looks like we hit T2 and then reversed from there. So that was a swing trade. Uh, as of now, I don't have the divergence, but we are approaching oversold. I always say oversold in itself is not a reason to buy. If you're oversold at support, and there is some support here. So I'll say I'm lukewarm on this one, but not, not enough to put it as an official trade idea or take it personally. There's some reactions there, some reactions there, and then reactions there. So hard to say where this one's going to stop. And again, oversold can become more oversold. So I'm not crazy about this chart now, but we'll watch it. Uh, JJG, uh, grains. This is a combination of a lot of the ones I've already covered here. Some of the different grains like corn. Um, 
uh, whatever else is in there, wheat, things like that. Uh, here's your divergence. So story is the same. Um, you have potential divergence, but it's not confirmed, and that PPO is still pointing lower right now. So these divergences can widen. There's room to go. But a, a reversal appears to be coming sooner than later in this one. It's just not there right now. There's not any buy signals whatsoever, any reason to go long this one yet. Uh, maybe soon. We'll see. DBA, same story again. Uh, this one has various commodities within it, and you can see some some nice divergence, potential divergences setting up. We're very oversold. Uh, last time we were oversold was right here. It led to a nice rally. You can see that. Uh, time before that was right here. We were, uh, yeah, right here. We were oversold, led to a nice rally. Uh, so you get the, uh, you know, the pattern. It's pretty simple. Wash, rinse, repeat. Buy on these oversold readings, and you would have done well for swing trades. Um, so we're deeply oversold. In fact, this is the most oversold we've been in years. We have very powerful potential divergences. So if you watch, be on watch for a reversal in DBA, it could come a little bit lower, it could come any day now, and watch for these divergences to be confirmed. And that's one you could probably uh, swing trade for maybe several months or more. Um, so it's, it's getting close, but we're not there yet. It's still in free fall mode. Wheat, W-E-A-T uh, -E is the ETF ticker. And again, same story. We're, you know, I just went over the grain ETF looks like this. That's because wheat is in there, corn is in there, all these. So uh, you can see setting up potential divergence, but we're still in free fall mode with the indicators pointing lower. Uh, I'm on watch for a reversal and probably going to come sooner or later, sooner than later. I already covered uh, USO. There's gasoline. UGA is a gasoline ETF and it looks just like oil. You have a pretty well-defined uptrend line, breakdown and back test. And so I think this is probably going to go lower with oil. JO, coffee, ETN, uh, same story as most of the other ones, even the the, um, uh, the uh, grains. You can see here uh, potential divergence, oversold, but uh, those divergences aren't yet confirmed. Well, when we get a reversal, now keep in mind these things, this these commodities. Uh, they're momentum trades, and they can reverse fast, so uh, be on the lookout for a reversal. Uh, you saw it happen here with this divergent low, and then boom, an explosive rally. Looks like we went right up to hit my second and final target. If that's potential T3, it would, wouldn't have been an official target, so we hit T1, T2, and then reversed. And uh, again, that's what we do. We try to find these, these falling wedge patterns and or divergent lows, uh, divergent highs, um, and get out and uh, that's it you know you can swing trade uh, these or just about any security in a bull or bear market you can swing trade them long or short same same principles apply all right uh, and that just leaves us with coco uh, coco was an official trade on the site recently and uh, played out perfectly well we were long somewhere I had a stop below 2140 that never got hit and we rallied up and hit, uh, I guess it was right here. Yeah, this is it. Hit the first target there, uh, went on to hit the second and final target and reversed. And that's why we have these final targets. Um, that's where usually I think, you know, either the risk reward is no longer favorable or I'm expecting a reversal at the end of a trend. And that's, that was a case there. So hopefully you guys were able to get in that one and then most importantly get out before the uh, correction set in because it gave back 100% of the gains or almost, I can't remember exactly where we were in on that one, but uh, it's getting close now because this is a support line here that we're at. We're at support. This is a very solid support, this orange line. And uh, you note here, we are now oversold. First, last time we touched that uh, 30 level on the RSI was back here, which was good for that pop. Uh, so, and then before that was right here, and that was good for that pop, and that was another trade, official trade. Looks like we fell shy of the third target, but we hit the second target and then reversed. Uh, so that's it. That's swing trading, folks. You can swing trade uh, any security, even in a sideways market. Um, so it's like investing, but on fast forward. You get in, get out, uh, wash, rinse, repeat. All right, uh, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.